Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk to you about geometric sequences and what those are. Geometric sequence, you can recognize it by its pattern of multiplying by the same amount from one term to the next. So with arithmetic sequences, if you've already watched our videos on those, that was about adding and subtracting from one term to the next. That told us something was arithmetic. So here we will know that something is a geometric sequence if we can recognize a pattern of multiplying from one term to the next. So here we've got an example of a 1, 5, 25, 125, 625. You might be able to tell by looking at this for just a minute or two that the pattern is multiplying by 5 to get from one term to the next term. So we would say that this is a geometric sequence because it has a pattern of multiplication that is the same. Um, just like when we had a pattern of adding the same thing in arithmetic sequences um, and we called that something a common difference, here what we should be able to do in a geometric sequence, we should be able to take any term and divide by the term before it and that will give us what's called the common ratio, what we're multiplying by each time. So in this one my common ratio is 5 because the pattern is multiplied by 5 repeatedly to get from one term to the next. Looking at some of our examples just to figure out if they're geometric or not, and if they are we'll go ahead and say what the ratio is. So in my first one I start at 16, I have 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And if you look at it for a second, you might be able to see that if I multiply by one half, and then I multiply by a half, and then I multiply by a half, I am getting the correct numbers in our sequence, right? So this one is geometric. If I take any term and I divide by the term before it, I get that one half, right? So yes, this one is geometric. And here we'll say that the common ratio is one half. For the second one, negative 15, 5, 25, 45, 65. There's a definite pattern going on here. You might notice that the pattern is add 20. But because this is an add pattern and not a multiply by the same thing type of pattern, this one's actually arithmetic. This is not geometric. So no, this is not geometric because we don't multiply by the same thing to get from one term to the next consistently. Here the third one I have 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, kind of this alternating pattern here for this sequence, positive, negative. So before I think we looked at this and said this was not geometric because we had minus 2 and then we had plus 2 and we kept doing minus 2 plus 2 and that was our pattern alternating. But with this one if we try to look at it as multiplication, how do I multiply and get from 1 to negative 1? Well the answer is I multiply by negative 1 and then the same thing to get from negative 1 to positive 1 I would also multiply by negative 1. So this is actually geometric because it's just a pattern of multiplying by negative 1 to change the signs each time. So yes this is geometric for this one and our ratio common ratio is negative 1. For this one here 256, 16, 4, 2 square root 2. Um, you know, you look at this, you see, well, this is getting smaller. Um, you know, I'm dividing by some stuff, or it's getting, it, it, you know, on some of these it looks half as much. If you actually figure out the pattern, it turns out what we're doing is taking the square root. So I'm taking the square root of 256 will give me 16, and the square root of 16 will give me 4, and the square root of 4 will give me 2, etc. Right? So that's the pattern here. Uh, but the issue is it's not multiplying by the same thing. So if you just look from 16 to 4 maybe for example, um, what do I multiply by to get from here to here? That's what we want to ask to see if it's geometric. The answer is I would have to multiply by 1 fourth to get from 16 to 4. But then to multiply to get from 4 to 2, we're not multiplying by 1 fourth. 2 is half of 4, right? If I take this divided by that, I can tell that the ratio between those two terms alone is a half. So we're not multiplying by the same thing. There is a pattern, but it is not multiplying by the same number. So no, this is not geometric. For the last one here, 1 ninth, 1 third, 1, 3, and then 9. Uh, it might be a little hard for you to tell here at the very beginning, um, but if you look further on, maybe we can see what the pattern is. Uh, to go from a third to 1, you'd have to multiply by 3. 1 times 3 would give you 3, 3 times 3 would give you 9. So if you think of this 1 9th and this like 3 over 9, right? 
you might be able to see. So we're actually multiplying by three to get from one term to the next. So since we have repeated multiplication pattern that is the exact same ratio every time, we have a common ratio. Yes, this is geometric. And in this case, our common ratio is three. A formula for a geometric sequence can be written like this, a sub n equals a1 times r to the n minus one. The basic anatomy of that formula is that any term is equal to the first term times the common ratio, and then this n minus one is very similar to what we had in the arithmetic sequence formula. That's the number of steps, if you recall, between the first term and the nth term. Using that formula, let's go ahead and get just a little bit of practice writing an explicit formula for geometric sequences. So all of these are geometric. We want to just write them in this form. Uh, we have the first one, which is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So we start at 4, and if you notice, looking here, the common ratio is 2. You take any term and divide it by the term before it, and you get the number two, so we do have a common ratio. So we know that R is two, and the only other thing I need to write this formula is I need A1, and that's obviously easy to spot. The first term is four. So if I want to write a geometric sequence based on that, then I say any term is equal to the first term, which is four, times two to the N minus one. And that's our formula for this first one. For the second one, We've got 80, negative 40, 20, negative 10, 5. So you can see we've got alternating signs here, this little alternating sequence. If you take any term and you divide it by the term before it, you will notice that you get negative 1 half. So this 80, I would multiply by negative 1 half. And then this negative 40, I would multiply by negative 1 half to get the positive 20, etc. Right? We get that same pattern. So our common ratio here is negative 1 half. My first term obviously is 80, so I can write my formula for this geometric sequence. I'm going to say that any term is equal to the formula 80 times negative 1 half to the n minus 1. And when I have a fraction like that, I really need to write the whole fraction in parentheses before I write my exponent n minus 1, just so I'm getting something that is nice and accurate. For this last one here, 1, 3 fourths, 9 over 16, 27 over 64, 81 over 256. Um, if you kind of think of this first term as 1 over 1, you might be able to see what's going on here. The tops were multiplying by 3, and on the bottom we are repeatedly multiplying by four to get the next denominator. So the pattern here is actually that we're multiplying by three-fourths times three-fourths, and then times three on the top times four on the bottom, etc. times three on the top times four on the bottom. So my ratio, common ratio here, is positive three-fourths. My first term obviously was one, and so we can write the formula for this geometric sequence as a sub n equals the first term one, times my common ratio to the n minus one. We should probably clean that up a little bit. We can write this more simply by just taking out the times one in the front and saying that a sub n is equal to three fourths to the n minus one. Okay, hopefully that gives you a good start on geometric sequences. We've got a few more videos on geometric sequence topics. We'll see you in the next one.